distillates. Thank you guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about where we're going in 2010, and you heard we've got a new CEO, so it's going to be short. I don't know. We'll see what he says. <laughs> um, but before I do that, I want to go back over uh, 2009 and go back to the last business plan rollout and where we've come to and what we've had to do. Um, 2009 was a bit of a rough year financially, but we persevered anyway. Um, we persevered where it counted, and I think to be able to stand up here and tell you that you've had the safest year in the plant's history two years in a row is quite, a, quite an accomplishment that you've all done. Uh, we've got four major NPRA safety awards for 2009. Four. including a gold award again. And if we hadn't had the Coker fire, we were in contention for the, for the Distinguished Merit Award, at least as a runner-up. This is the one that Exxon Baytown has been getting every year for the last 10 years. They haven't had an accident or anything. We're in contention, if, they, if we hadn't had that PSM incident, we would have been mentioned at the NPRA for that as well. Uh, we're noticed. We're setting, we're in a pace center safety um, roll right now. Let's keep it up. You guys um, bringing your brains to work and keeping it safe for everybody, looking after everybody here, really making it true that this is the safest place we'll all be today. The other thing that we really accomplished last year was our impact with the community. When we say we're operating at the pleasure of the community, they're starting to really want us here. I mean, as we were starting up the coker after the fire, okay, again for the third year in a row, we got awarded by Wilmington Business of the Year. Three times in a row. And, you know, we really haven't been here three years yet. We operate at the pleasure of the community. People say, no, no, we're operating under regulations. Well, we are. But regulators, let me tell you something about regulators that you probably already know. Regulators don't act. They react. Okay? They react to problems. One of the things that we told the high schools, or the residents around here, when Tesoro got here was, look, I'm not going to be so arrogant to tell you that I'm going to have a goal for this refinery that says we're going to be unseen, unsmelled, and unheard. Okay? Uh, that would be hypocritical. We're a refinery. Sometimes they're going to see us, smell us, and hear us. We're try going to try and lower our footprint as much as possible, but we're still an operating heavy industry oil refinery. What I am going to tell you is if you see, smell, or hear anything, call us first. It may be us, it may not be, but we're going to take responsibility of figuring out what it is and get back to you and solve the problem for you. We got a response from the AQMD about two weeks after that statement saying, hey, they're not calling us anymore. I said, yeah, well, you're just going to give us a ticket. We're going to solve the problem. Uh, Karma will tell you uh, withdrawal from the trust bank when we have a, and it is like a bank, but we're not going into overdraft. It comes back because we've put so many deposits in that. And your volunteerism out in the community is really, really important to us. And those who do, thank you very, very much. It's really important that we keep that up as well. And part of the things that we've emphasized on that, if you remember, was a real focus on yield and energy. As a matter of fact, on energy, we got so aggressive on saving energy that we just got an award from SoCal Gas in 2009 for the best energy program in Southern California, which is something that you can all be proud of. And that was insulation. Steam traps, but, a, but if you remember a year ago, we couldn't do much because we couldn't flare and our fuel gas system was full. And so wasting energy um, was what we did in order to stay running, right? Because what are you going to do with the excess gas? We've dug such a big hole by improving our yields, by recovering LPG. Um, I was told by Ops Coordination the other day that our biggest uplift right now that we see, and do you know what it is? It's recovering propane and selling it. 
and burning natural gas in this place. We've got a long ways to go, but we've got a good start. But even in these times, if we do some of these things right and build on the base that we've got already, it's possible for us to, here, now, this year. It's possible. I'll give you the byword for the year. Straight lines make money. So, we put in crude metering. You saw that earlier in a skip. Yeah, we're relentless with operations planning right now to smooth out the crude schedule. We've heard keep problems small. Okay, A small problem on the front end of this refinery magnifies like a photo magnifier all the way through the, to the product tanks. Small problem there. If you don't catch it there, it'll become a bigger problem in HPV or the cracker or cat cracker. Or all the way down the road, you'll have variation in the utility systems and everything starts rocking. Right? Keep the problem small at the front end. It starts with the tank field. We're relentlessly trying to get our tanks back into service so that we've got some flexibilities. What's the cheapest process unit we run? A tank. Okay? A tank. A tank full of alkali is an alkali plant running, etc., etc. We've made an organizational adjustment locally. I've created a uh, ops coordination department working for operations. That's in line with this as well. So that we're not going to create our own variation for the last few thousand barrels of throughput. We're going to get the first 90,000 barrels a day picture perfect and focus on that. That's how we make money. That's how we've got to do it. And be there when it counts. You know, when we do have a problem, like we did on the hydrocracker last week, that recovery was excellent. Get it back. But get it back safely. Don't lose our principles and our tenants. Very, very important that we recover strong when we do have an incident. Even more important that we work preventatively. I know it's boring. The straight lines are boring. Let's get bored. That way we got time to have these things too, right? Let's get bored that way, but not on alert. Straight lines make money. We're reinvesting this year in fundamental training for everybody on what they do, skills training. We're looking at ways to get our schedules that we work to allow that to happen very robustly. Competence is key. Refresh competence is key. We're going relentlessly after the infrastructure. You've heard about the fire water system, the tanks, um, energy. Anything to make us more efficient safely will do. Any suggestions you heard saw it in a skip this morning? Remember, straight lines make money. That's what we're going to do this year. We're going to